The U.S. economy is now beginning its gradual recovery from the recession caused by the global pandemic. With Joe Biden's relief plan, there has been a massive expansion of unemployment benefits that provide unemployed Americans an extra $300 per week. These enhanced unemployment benefits have left the labor market on a peculiar path of recovery and has even resulted in many Americans refusing to find work. Business owners from across the country have had to compete with the government's overly generous unemployment benefits and have struggled to fill positions and keep citizens from quitting. Some small business owners have stated that they receive 20 to 30 calls per day from prospective employees interested in filling their open positions. However, nearly all of these calls have proven to be citizens pretending to look for a job in order to take full advantage of the government benefits. These citizens have no real intention of working for these business owners, but rather, they sit at home while claiming to the government to be looking for work. Welcome to the Savvy Few, where we keep you up to date with what's going on in today's economy. If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and bell notification so you can stay up to date on the world's economy. A March survey by the National Federation of Independent Business has found that 42% of business owners had job openings that could not be filled. This is an all-time high. The U.S. labor market has never experienced the staggering number of unfilled positions that are available. Potential employees could be skittish to fill these open positions due to health risks amidst the pandemic, a lack of childcare or in-person schooling, or due to effectively decreased wages. For example, with restaurants opening only to partial capacity, servers will be unable to rake in the same amount of tips that they could have if the restaurant was open to full capacity. These effects, on top of Biden's recovery stimulus, have left business owners scratching their heads in frustration trying to fill their empty positions. The PEW Research Center has conducted a study where they found that these labor market shortages felt particularly strongly among business owners in the service and retail industries disproportionately affect younger Americans aged 16 to 24. 9.2 million, or nearly half of all workers that compromise this age demographic, are employed in the service industry. The study also found that those working in the service industry earned lower than average earnings. Across all industries, the average weekly earnings in January of 2020 were $975. By contrast, workers in food services and drinking places earned only $394 per week on average. With weekly earnings being only $94 more than the Biden unemployment benefits and that jobs in this sector typically not providing any benefits such as paid leave or health insurance, it's no wonder that employers are struggling to hire and retain employees for these unfilled positions. However, it's not only workers in the service industry that are being negatively affected by the state of the American economy. Many stimulus funds provided by the federal government have been wildly mismanaged. One U.S.-based oil company, Marathon Petroleum, received $2.1 billion in pandemic benefits while simultaneously laying off nearly 2,000 full-time employees, which accounted for 9% of the company's labor force. During the pandemic, oil corporations have received billions of dollars in taxpayer money from multiple programs, quotes, with no strings attached. This has given companies such as Marathon Petroleum perverse incentives to treat its employees as expendables. Marathon even went as far to invest much of its cash flow into an aggressive stock buyback program with the stimulus funds rather than protecting workers during the economic downturns that the last year has created. According to SEC filings examined by Bailout Watch, Marathon Petroleum came to receive roughly $1.1 million in federal dollars for each job that the company eliminated. The Biden stimulus package has allowed boardrooms of massive corporations, such as Marathon Petroleum, to continue profiting while laying off thousands of employees in order to cut costs. Thanks to the federal government, the practice of awarding gigantic subsidies of hundreds of millions of dollars to companies that are not only creating jobs, 
but are actively cutting jobs is continuing. These never-before-seen labor market conditions, in part created by Biden's unemployment benefits package, have even begun to face political backlash by several state governments. GOP governors in 25 states are officially beginning to opt out of the federal government's expanded unemployment benefits program. Citing the aforementioned workforce shortages and an improving economy, these Republican state governments will collectively forego $21.7 billion in benefits for 3.6 million American citizens. Given that several of these states are beginning to achieve the vaccination targets set by the federal government, many of these governors state that the benefits are hampering job growth and keeping Americans at home rather than searching for employment. Some states that have chosen to opt out of the federal unemployment benefits have instead implemented back-to-work policies in which citizens are rewarded a lump sum of cash for finding stable employment. The state of Oklahoma, for example, announced that the first 20,000 of its citizens currently on unemployment benefits who return to the workforce will receive $1,200. These policies are created with the goal of incentivizing its citizens to return to the labor force to earn government assistance, rather than receiving assistance for refusing to work. By granting citizens incentive to return to work, one can expect these unfilled positions to be snatched up more quickly than the states that will continue to expand unemployment benefits. Some economists are arguing that businesses are posting wages that are too low when attempting to hire new employees, and that that is one of the chief reasons for the surge in the shortage of labor. Small business owners, however, particularly in the service industry, have been barely staying afloat due to off-and-on government-mandated shutdowns since the pandemic first started in early 2020. According to the National Federation of Independent Business, 28% of small businesses have recently significantly raised compensation for current and prospective employees, and yet these same firms face several unfilled positions. How are these small businesses supposed to further increase their wages to attract employees? when the federal government is paying them competitive rates to simply sit at home. The stimulus package provided by the Biden government in order to aid the recovery of the United States economy has been much more effective in lining the pockets of executives rather than helping businesses attract labor for much needed positions. Despite other significant recessions in the past, the US economy is experiencing record high unfilled positions Business owners are finding it challenging to have prospective employees follow up for an interview, let alone come and fill the positions that are needed. Thank you for watching. Please like this video. It greatly helps the channel reach more savvy viewers like you who want to stay updated on today's economy. If you're not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button with the bell notification to get notified every time we post a new video. Until next time.